We initiate a calendar spread. Uh, let me give you a couple rules from the calendar spread. Number one, we always sell the closer to expiration option. We always sell that one. What's the reason for that? Well, the reason is, again, the time decay, the time decay chart. And let's take a, let's take a quick look at that time decay chart because, again, it's very, very important in the calendar spread. If we are selling an option that is, say, 60 days from expiration, it's going to be right here, and the value is going to be dropping. It's going to be dropping very quickly. If we buy the option that's much further out, say 120 days out, the time value decay is going to be very slow out here. So you're, you're taking advantage of the fact that the time value curve is in your favor and the overvaluation. So you want to always sell an option that is closer to expiration, number one. Number two, you want to make certain that the option you sell is at least 50% overvalued. Okay. And again, this is a, a more advanced strategy, and it's a strategy that you need charts for. But another thing that we do is, is if you listen to our hotline, that you're all going to get an opportunity to do, we're going to tell you when those opportunities occur so that you can actually recognize them yourself. And if you follow us enough, and when we tell you there's an opportunity, we tell you what to look for, and uh, we tell you which options we're using, we tell you our adjustment, or closing points, or profit points, then you'll be able to find them yourself eventually. You'll be able to find them yourself. But again, the bookie position is the number one position, the easiest one, the one you should always use. The free trade, the calendar spread, and the, and the next spread we're going to go into, which is the ratio spread, are trades that are the more advanced strategies that you should take some time before you go into. Okay. Let's look at our last strategy for this afternoon. And it's really our, the only other strategy we recommend using quite often. And it's the position that we just looked at when we started the seminar. It's the ratio position. It's the position that got me involved in trading. Got me involved in trading. And ratio spread is buying an option that is close to the money and selling multiple options that are out of the money. Okay. In this case, we are looking at the spread of buying a gold 440 call and selling two gold 500 calls. And we always want to collect the credit when we do it. That's a very important thing. We never want to initiate a ratio spread unless we have a credit. Okay? And you're going to see the importance of that in one minute. But the great thing about the ratio spread is you're buying the most fairly valued option. You're selling multiples of the most overvalued option. What's going to happen on the time value decay? If the market doesn't move anywhere, yes, you will lose on the option you purchased. We've talked about that all afternoon long. You will lose on the option you purchased. But since you sold multiple more overvalued options, you're going to, the, the money you collect from their decay is going to more than op offset the loss from the single option you purchased. So just as we did the example when we started the seminar, of the first gold ratio spread, look at what happens to this spread if the market goes against us and moves to zero. We buy a 440 call and sell two 500 calls at a $500 credit. Now let's assume that's a $500 credit after commissions. So every trade has commissions. You've got to factor that into all your positions. But let's assume we collect a $500 credit after commissions. Okay. And let's say we initiate the trade with gold at about uh, 460. What happens if the gold market moves lower? If the gold market drops to zero, all the options become worthless, and where do we stand? The option we purchased is worthless. The two options we sold have no value. We just keep the $500 credit and walk away, and that's our profit. Now, that's pretty darn nice since we have a huge range of profit on the downside, anywhere from zero, zero to 440 we make the $500 credit. Okay, so that's pretty easy. Nothing, nothing else to do there because the options will all be worthless and we just keep the credit. Now what happens if gold starts to move up? Well, that actually is the best of both worlds because every dollar that gold moves over 440, we will collect an extra $100 plus the $500 credit up until $500. Okay, so from from f and, and this chart shows the, the, how the profit goes up from 440 to the maximum profit at 
at $500, the maximum profit at that level is $6,000 plus the $500 credit. So for every dollar gold goes over 440, we collect $100 in premium. Additional, additional. Okay. At, five, at $500, that stops, and we start giving back some of the profit. Okay. At all the ways to 560, all the ways to 560, we still make money to 560, although at 560, okay, we're only, we're only ahead $500. But isn't it nice to have a trade that has a profit range from zero to $560 per ounce? Isn't it nice to have a trade that, that has profits at the lowest possible point the market can, can go to and profits that is maybe up to $100 above current levels? That's the kind of trade that got me into trading, and that's the kind of trade that I think should make you very excited, too. Uh, what standards do we look for in the ratio spread? We like to have the option we sell be above contract highs, if possible, or at least above one-year highs. And generally, ratio spreads are going to be all on the call side. The reason for that is calls tend to become overvalued more often than puts. The public demands call options. For one, for one reason or another, they feel that call, you can make unlimited money if you buy calls.